I would categorize this as a medium difficulty hydrostatic force on a planar surface example problem. Looking from the left, we have a submerged gate which is able to swing and rotate about pivot point C and is being acted on by sort of a four meter height of water that's a further two meters away from the surface. But on the right hand side, the gate is being held shut by an unknown height of water that's pushing downwards and to the left on the gate. And that's what we're trying to find. What is the critical height H that will cause this gate to stay shut in order to avoid seepage underneath the gate, which would happen if it started to open? Givens for this problem are a width of 1.5 meters, that's the dimension into the screen of this gate, and that the gate itself is massively heavy, 30 megagrams which right off the bat, I'm gonna go ahead and convert into 30,000 kilograms so that the units don't mess us up later on. And there was one other implied given in this problem statement, and that was when we were told that we were trying to avoid seepage. That gives us that the normal force at point D will be zero. That's saying that the gate is right on the verge of just about being able to open. If there were a normal force acting here, it would mean that the gate is not on the verge of opening and that seepage is not about to occur. We've got a visitor, your TA Indiana is joining to help us out with the concept for this problem. And there's a lot of things you could write here. I would write, say, hydrostatic force on a plane surface, right? Submerged surfaces would also be a common way to describe this type of problem. Or if you want to describe the specific method that we'll probably be using to solve this, you could write pressure prism as the main concept for this problem. This is a force problem. That means you're going to have to draw a free body diagram. And fair warning, this will probably be kind of a messy free body diagram due to all of the distributed loads. So since the gate is the object that's potentially rotating, that is the free body. So we're gonna separate it from its surroundings. We've got the normal force down at the bottom. Then there'll be a force acting from the right-hand side, which I'll call FH, since it's gonna be dependent on that quantity H. On the left-hand side, the pressure due to the water is increasing with depth. The pressure starts at zero at the surface of the water and increases rho gh as you get deeper. And so the shape that's actually acting on the gate itself is going to be a trapezoid because the very top of that triangle is not acting on the gate. The gate starts a little bit lower, which again then forms the shape of a trapezoid. Have you ever tried to like pat your head and rub your tummy at the same time? That's kind of what it's like for me right now. I'm trying to give Indy my full attention with some, with some pets since he's being such a, a big help and also give you guys my full attention also for this video. So this trapezoid is gonna result in two forces because I'm gonna split the trapezoid into a rectangle and a triangle. Some people actually really like splitting it up into two triangles, but that's not me. Those people are... And lastly, since there's a pin joint at point C, there's gonna be two forces, one in the X and one in the Y direction, where you'll notice that I've actually rotated. Instead of X and Y being horizontal and vertical, I'm rotating them so that they are parallel and perpendicular to the gate itself. Really, I'm only drawing these for completion. When I do a sum of moments, I'm gonna do a moment of point C, so both of these forces are gonna cancel out anyway. You'll notice that I did not draw these pressure arrows due to the distributed loads from water horizontally like I did on another video about a gravity dam. Pascal's law says that pressure will exert a force on all surfaces perpendicular to the surface. So in this gate, since the gate is at an angle, then the forces of water acting on the gate will also be at that same angle. So this is a pretty common mistake that students make is they try to apply these forces horizontally instead of perpendicular to the surface. And last vector is gonna be the weight vector, which is just gonna point straight down right at the centroid of the gate. So free body diagrams, besides forces, you also need distances. So every force vector also has a distance vector so we can measure, eventually we're gonna need the distance from point C, but for the triangular vectors, it's actually, I always measure those from the tall side of the triangle because the centroid of a triangle is one third the distance of the triangle closer to the tall side. So that's why I've got distances there measured to the tall side of those triangles, but we'll have to remember later on that we actually need, when we do our moment equation, the distance from C, not the distance from D. And before I write my moment equation, I'm just gonna write another cleaner, easier version of this free body diagram that just has the forces themselves on it so that I don't get confused and accidentally miss something when I write out my moment equation. So the pivot point for this gate is at point C, so I sum moments about point C. I arbitrarily choose clockwise as positive. You can choose the other way, it won't matter. And we've got four forces 
The weight vector and FH are both causing clockwise rotation, so those are positive terms. And the rectangular and triangular distributed loads on the left-hand side are both trying to create a counterclockwise rotation, so those are both negative terms. And I knew when I wrote that free body diagram, choosing distances from point D instead of C was gonna mess me up. And of course, the first time I write my moment equation, I messed it up and used the wrong distance. For the moment about point C, it needs to be force times five minus the distance. Because I'm not measuring these force vectors from point D, which is the ground, I'm measuring them from the pivot point at C, so that's why these quantities for dh and dt should be five minus d in order to get the distance from point c, which is where the moment is being calculated. So now we've got one equation and eight unknowns. Yay. So let's just make some progress. Pick anything we think we can find and just solve for it and just start plugging stuff in. dw looks easy enough. Since the weight vector is exactly in the middle of the gate, dw is just gonna be half of that horizontal distance. So if the horizontal distance is three, dw is 1.5 meters. The weight itself, we were given a mass of 30,000 kilograms times gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, not 32.2, which is for English units. And we get 294,000 newtons as the weight of this gate. Let's move to the rectangular distributed load next, dr. So the rectangular distributed load is just uniform, so its centroid is right in the middle. And so for this three, four, five triangular gate, it's gonna have a length of five meters so dr is half of that, or 2.5 meters. The triangular distributed load will act through the centroid of the triangle, so one-third of five is 1.67. But again, remember that 1.67 is measured from the tall side of the triangle. If we want to get the distance to the small side of the triangle, we've got that overall length of five minus the 1.67. That gives us a distance for the centroid of the triangle, 3.33 meters. So dh is gonna have h in it as a variable, so let's skip that one for now and start looking at some of the forces on the left-hand side. There are multiple ways to find forces on a submerged surface, but usually the easiest one is going to be with a pressure prism. You're gonna be able to use the pressure prism whenever the surface contact area is rectangular. Because if it's rectangular, then you can just look at the sort of pressure cross section from the side and the prism is just an extruded shape. So you can get the volume of the prism as simply a two dimensional area times the depth of the gate. Now this will not work if you have more complicated shapes, like if your gate were circular, like if it were a hatch. In the case of a circular hatch, the shape becomes much more complicated and you're gonna need to use some equations that involve moment of inertia because for a circular cross-sectional area gate, the depth is actually a variable. It's not a constant like in this prism. So if you're ready to move on to a more advanced video like that with a circular submerged gate, where you actually have to use the moment of inertia equations, you can click on the video up here. That'll take you to a more advanced problem. For this rectangular prism, you can see that it's acting on an area of five meters for the length of the gate, 1.5 meters for the depth into the page, and then rho g h at the top of the gate, so at a height of two meters below the surface of the water. Even though the bottom of the gate is at a depth of six meters, this rectangle is actually cut off, only uses that pressure of two meters of depth. It's the triangular distributed load that accounts for all of the rest of the depth. So the force due to the rectangular distributed load, the volume of this pressure prism is, is rho g h with an h of two meters, and then the 1.5 and the five meters, and that gives a force of about 147,000 newtons. And again, you get to units of newtons because the rho gh gives you pressure, and the 1.5 and the five give you area, and pressure times area gives a force. So now looking at the triangular prism, we can see the same dimensions, the five meters and the 1.5 meters for the area of contact. And even though the top of the gate is starting from a depth of two meters, that two meters of depth has already been accounted for by the rectangular load. This triangle is essentially starting over at zero and then going to a depth of four. So even though the bottom is at a depth of six meters, remember that the rectangle accounts for the first two. So we're subtracting two meters of depth because of the rectangle. So this triangle only goes from zero to four. So the volume of the triangular pressure prism is gonna be the 1.5 times five for the area, and the pressure will be rho gh, and since it's a triangle, a one half. So one half rho gh times five times the extruded depth 
of 1.5. And that gets us to 147 kilonewtons, which is the same answer we had for the rectangular distributed load. And that's entirely coincidence. And these didn't have to work out that way. It just happened to, in this case, because the depth of the triangle of four was exactly double the width of the rectangle, which was two. So they worked out to be the same volume. But in general, that's not normally going to be true. That was just a coincidence. All right, Indy has been meowing like crazy and just running on his treadmill by himself, being really loud. So short little break, give him a chance to run, work off some energy, and maybe he'll come back out and help us out with the right-hand side. All right, we're definitely gonna need your TA's help but for the right-hand side because this side is more complicated because the distance H is unknown, which makes it a little bit tricky. So I start off by drawing the pressure prism, which has a depth of 1.5 into the screen, right? The bottom of the triangle is gonna have pressure rho G H, but we don't yet know what H is. But another thing that we don't know is for this pressure prism, what is the height of this triangle? We know the 1.5 depth, but we don't actually know the height because we don't know the water depth. But since we know that the gate is at a 3-4-5 triangle, the water depth is at H, then we can find the hypotenuse of the triangle, which is the length of the portion of the gate that is touching water on the right-hand side would be 5 fourths of H. Again, because the height of water is equivalent to the four, and then the part of the water touching the gate would be like the five in the three, four, five triangle. So by setting up a ratio of that H to the surface contact area in the gate to the four and the five, we get again, five fourths H is the side of the gate that is touching water on the right hand side. And so the volume of the pressure prism is gonna be the area of that triangular distributed load, one half base times height where one half, and then the base is rho g h, and the height is 5 fourths h. So in order to find f h, which is the force acting on the right-hand side of the gate, the volume of the pressure prism is going to start by finding the area of this red triangle and then extruding it a distance of 1.5 into the page. So this red triangle has area 1 half base times height, where the base is rho g h, and the height is 5 fourths H. Again, it's not just H because H represents the depth of water straight down, but the height of this sort of angled red triangle is along a diagonal, which is the hypotenuse, which was the five fourths of H. Of all of the places to mess up on this problem, this is the number one spot where I would expect students to mess up most of the time. I would expect the most common mistake for this problem to be using H, the depth of the water, as the distance of the surface of contact with the water on the right side of the gate, and not accounting for the fact that since it's at an angle, it's actually a little bit larger than H. So multiplying all that out, we get about 9197 times H squared as the force acting on the right-hand side. And now the final piece we need for the moment equation is the line of action for this FH. Where is the centroid of this triangle on the right-hand side? I called this earlier five minus DH. And so DH will be one third of the height of this red triangle. So if I redraw this as a new orange triangle with a height of five fourths of H, I can see that the centroid is gonna be at one third of five fourths of H. So then to get the distance from point C, which is where the force is acting for the moment, it's gonna be five minus 0.4167H, once you do the 5 fourths times 1 third. If you're feeling even a little bit overwhelmed at this point, rest assured, your TA Indiana is 100% with you. He kind of gave up on this a couple of minutes ago. He's just back trying to play right now. But stick it out, we're just about done. And in fact, we're ready to plug in all of the quantities we have, we can now plug them back into the moment equation. Rearranging terms gives us a cubic function in H. If you plug that into a solver, you'll get three different answers. One of which is negative, which clearly makes no sense. One that is 3.6, and the other is 11.1 .1 meters. Of course, 11.1 .1 also 
also makes no sense because the gate only has a length of five. So the answer has to be between zero and five, which gets us to an answer of 3.6 meters. It may seem a little strange that such a low height of water on the right hand side can actually counteract such a tall height of water on the left hand side. But don't forget the weight of this gate. It had a mass of 30,000 kilograms. So that also helps to push back against the weight of water from the left. This was a medium difficulty hydrostatic forces on submerged surfaces problem. So if you're ready to move on to a more advanced problem that has a circular cross section that can't be solved using this pressure prism method, you have to use the equations with moment of inertia. Now go ahead and click on this next video. This is going to be about as hard as these submerged surface problems get, except for curved submerged surfaces. Those are way harder.